Hi, okay, some terminology today and some introductory anatomy. We're gonna divide the abdomen up two different ways. Um, we're gonna des describe the four quadrants and we're gonna describe the nine regions. What we want to be able to do is to describe to one another accurately, anatomically, where something is. An organ, um, a lump, pain felt by somebody. So we take some surface anatomy landmarks, we use them to make some imaginary lines, some sections through the body. And by doing that, we can then describe this is in the region. And we all know where that region is because we've all used a similar method for dividing up the body. All right, that's our aim. As usual with anatomy, it's clearly describing to somebody else where something is. We can easily get muddled, so we use some set terminology. If you've watched my videos before, you know how I struggle with noise. So I thought if I get in early today, I can avoid the kids. I got lawnmowers instead. All right, first one first, easiest one first. Um, the four quadrants, here comes the lawnmower. So here's the abdomen, here's the thorax, roughly speaking. You can see the rib cage here, you can see the muscles. Imagine we've got skin on here, um, and you can still do this same method. So we want to divide the abdomen up into four quadrants. The first thing we do is we take the midline, and we imagine the median plane, so we're cutting the body in half in this direction, the median plane, shunk, that's one line. And then we find the umbilicus and we take another section, another slice, we have a transverse or an axial section at the level of the umbilicus. This is the transumbilical plane. And now by creating those two lines, we have divided the abdomen up into four quarters. One, two, three, four. And those quarters are sen sensibly named. Remember that when we're talking about the side, we're always talking about the patient's side. So this is the right upper quadrant and the right lower quadrant and the left upper quadrant and the left lower quadrant. That's the quadrant method. Easy peasy. So we can say that the liver is largely in the right upper quadrant. We find the appendix and the cecum in the right lower quadrant, and so on and so on. All right? Um, but the other method is to divide this up into nine parts. We need a little bit more anatomy to divide up into nine parts. Okay, first one then. This bone and this bone. These are the clavicles. I know, we're a long way away from the abdomen, but these are the clavicles. So these are either ends of a clavicle. If we go halfway between the two ends, we are mid-clavicle. Now, if we cut another section, so imagine sectioning the body or drawing a line on this plane, if we take this point and continue inferiorly, we draw a mid-clavicular mid -clavicular line. And we do that on both sides. We have two mid-clavicular lines. You can go down as far as you like. That's the first section. Next, you see the, uh, the rib cage here. We've got some floating ribs back there. They're off doing other things. But here, the lowest part of the rib cage, this is cartilage. Here's the rib, here's the cartilage. This is the 10th rib. Now, we, we're gonna do a horizontal line or a transverse plane at the lowest point of the rib cage where the cartilage is. This is the subcostal plane. So this is our next division. Some people will use a transpyloric plane. Um, Pyloric, pylorus. So the pylorus is part of the stomach, so that's what it's referring to. But the transpyloric plane, well, to find that, you take the top of the manubrium, so the superior part of the manubrium, this is the jugular notch here. So we've got this point here, and then we go all the way down to the pubis bone, and we have the superior part of the pubis bone, and then we pick a point halfway between the two, and that is the transpyloric plane. It's very, very close. It's very, very similar. Um, if, you're, if you're led down, 
that's about the level of the, the pylorus. So that's the transpyloric plane. So you might hear subcostal plane or transpyloric plane. We're going to use the subcostal plane. Makes a little bit more sense later. So that's our first division, which we can do in two different ways. Okay, the next transverse section we're going to take, or the next horizontal line we're going to draw, is, so here's the pelvis here. These are the iliac bones, the wings of the ilium on either side. And we're going to get um, the iliac tubercles. And we're going to draw a line across them. And that will be the transtubercular plane, also known as the intertubercular plane. Um, so you can see that that's at about the level of the L5 vertebra here. Now again, some people do it differently. Um, if we follow the iliac crest anteriorly, this pointy sticky outy bit here, this is the anterior superior iliac spine, abbreviated to ASIS or ASIS. Some people draw a line across here and that gets called an interspinous plane. It's close, it's just a little bit lower. So you can see how there's a little bit of um, roughness to this whole system. But we're going to use the subcostal plane, the transtubercular plane and the two midclavicular lines. And that's us dividing our abdomen up into nine regions. Each of those regions has a name. Now, right in the middle here, we find, we find the umbilicus. So the central region of the nine regions is called the umbilical region. That's a nice one, right? Now, if the central part is called the umbilical region, I want you to imagine, when you're trying to remember the names of these parts, I want you to imagine, I know I can't do this very well. Uh, I want you to imagine a nice big belly, right? A nice big belly sticking out. Because gaster means stomach. And in this case, we're not thinking stomach, stomach, as in the actual organ up here. We're thinking nice big stomach, right? No, yeah, stomach. Because this region up here, so the region superior to the umbilicus, is the epigastrium, or the epigastric region. Epi means upon. So if you imagine that sticky outy belly, this region is upon the gaster, upon the stomach, upon the belly. So you have the epigastrium, the umbilicus, or the umbilical region, and then inferiorly, if you have underneath that belly, we have the hypogastrium, or the hypogastric region. Now that region is also superior to the pubis bone or pubic bone. So it gets called the, the pubic region or sometimes the suprapubic region. So we have the epigastric, umbilical and hypogastric, hypo below regions in the midline. All right. Down here on either side of the um, the hypogastric region, down here on either side. Um, those regions are called the left and right iliac regions or the left and right inguinal regions. This is the iliac bone, so it can get its name from there. Inguen refers to the groin, so these are inguinal regions or iliac regions. Now the two lateral regions in the middle they get called the lumbar region. So lumbar comes from a word meaning um, the bit between the ribs, the ribs and the pelvis, right? The lumbar, the loin. So we have the left and right lumbar regions, which also get called the left and right flank. So we have the left flank and the right flank on either side. Two regions left. Now the last two regions, either side of the epigastrium, get called the hypo chondrium or the hypochondriac regions. We have the left hypochondriac and the right hypochondriac. Hypo means below. Uh, chondral refers to the cartilages of the ribs and I know they are, they're not down here, they're actually up here. Um, so hypochondriac is making a reference to the cartilages 
and the stuff that's deeper to them, the stuff that's below them, if that makes sense. So hypochondrium or hypochondriac regions, and that's it. Those are the nine regions of the abdomen. Now, you might be thinking hypochondriac, that's a term we use for something else. Yes, um, in, in modern times, that's become a little bit of a derogatory term. A hypochondriac is defined as someone who you know, thinks there's something wrong with them when maybe there isn't, over, is overly concerned with their health, but they are otherwise healthy. How are the two things related? If you look at the word hypochondriac on its own, knowing our Greek and Latin origins, hypochondriac has got nothing to do with worrying about your health. But from about 400 years ago, um, when medicine was still concerned with the four humours and vapours and that sort of thing, the organs around here, the organs deep to the ribs, so the organs in the hypochondriac regions, the liver and what have you, were blamed for releasing the vapours associated with melancholy and sadness and worry and that sort of thing. So somebody who was overly concerned with their health was said to be a hypochondriac related to this region and those organs. We know better now. There you go then. I promised you some terminology and terminology you have. That is how we can describe to one another regions within the abdomen and where somebody might be sensing some pain, where we might have found a lump, a mass, a tumour, where we might find an organ. So I can describe to you where we might find different organs and what have you. So those are the terms. Remember the surface anatomy landmarks, if you can. Palpate them on yourself or on somebody else. Um, and imagine those, those, either those four lines or those nine lines and the names of the regions. All right. Maybe that wasn't so babbling as I thought it was going to be. See you next week.